Okay, great. So we'll officially start our meeting. Sure. Good evening and welcome everyone. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Crystal McCain and I am the club president of Cuba Mill Postmasters. I welcome everyone to our meeting tonight, especially if this is your first time. Cuba Mill is an exciting place and we've got some great things coming up this next year. Before we start into our meeting, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge our guests um, and other first-timers. So if you're a guest here, if you're not a member, if you're visiting, if it's your first time, if you'd like to just please stand, tell us your name, and just give us like uh, one or two sentences about what brought you here. Feel free. Thank you. Hi, my name is Luis. I came here because I am learning English. I am Spanish. I have a talent for public speaking. But I feel that that in English is not the case, so I would like to practice it and learn from you uh, while being in Toastmasters. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, <laughs> and we have a Spanish speaker in our room, which is Bob. So, oh, yes. <laughs> would you like to say? Hi, I'm Jamal. Uh, I came to the other Toastmasters meeting, so I didn't know the difference. So, <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, started like a membership with them, so I came tonight. And uh, is it Juan? Yes, Juan said I should become a part of this club. So uh, I listen to her, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to go into public speaking, um, ultimately, and motivational speaking. So I heard this would be a good reference to have. Okay, great, thanks. Welcome to you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Juan is definitely a good person to listen to. <laughs> Would you like to stay? Oh, sure. I'm Jeet. Uh, I've been here a couple of times. Uh, I'm here to uh, improve my leadership skills, especially in the part of the training locations. Okay, great. Welcome. Nice to have you back, Jeet. Thank you. So at this time, I will turn our meeting over. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Before we get started, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you all for reminding me. Everyone can please stand and we'll say our pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm going to bring up our Toastmaster of the day. Our Toastmaster of the day today uh, is Teresa McCoy. Today is a special day for us, let me just also say, because we are at a change of officers. Our old Toastmasters in the year ended at the end of June, and we just started our new one July 1st, so we have a whole new fleet of officers um, that are here this week. So let me bring up our immediate past president and Toastmaster of the day, Teresa McCoy. We have the speaker part, then we have improv, and we have evaluations. So the first thing we're going to do is introduce our different role holders, and we're going to start with our general evaluator is going to be Bob Wilson. And our speech evaluator, one and two, I'll come back to them in a minute. Our grammarian and ha counter is going to be Ricky. And what his responsibility is, do you want to tell us what your responsibility is, Ricky? To listen to, to all of the presenters and uh, mention the number of ums, ahs, you know, other fillers, ahs, and word of the any significant um, grammar mismatch. Thank you. Our timer today is going to be Kyle. Do you want to tell us what the timer does? Yeah, record the time for the speeches. Um, make sure there are a lot of times. All right. And the way it works is if a speech is for five to seven minutes, at five minutes, the green card goes up. At six minutes, a yellow card goes up so that the speaker knows where their time is at. And at seven minutes, the red card will go up. And you have 
30 seconds to complete your speech. You may finish your speech any time after the green card is shown. So, but you, you have that little 30 second leeway. If you do 31 seconds, you're disqualified. If you were in a competition. And that brings us to our speech part. Our first speaker is going to be our new president, Crystal McCain. And she's going to be giving project number nine, Persuade with Power. It's five to seven minutes, and it's titled The Presidential Address. Now, Hugh, uh, Crystal is Humor Mill's newly elected president. She also helped to form the club two years ago. Welcome, Crystal. First time as VPE, so I forgot word of the day. We have a word of the day. It's to help us build our vocabulary. And our word of the day today is change. And it means to make a difference in some difference, to make different in some particular way, to make radically different, to give a different position, course, or direction to, which is very appropriate as today is first day of our change. Now what I just did was when we hear the word change, you knock on the table once so as not to disrupt the speaker. Anytime you hear the speaker say the word change or anybody who's standing up here, you give a knock. All right, now we can move forward. Good evening, guests. Fellow postmasters, competency and competent confidence. What does each mean to you? I have uh, different life, life coaches that I use for different things, and one of my coaches talks about competence and confidence and how they are each important. They go hand in hand with each other. Confidence for example, is when we can go forward and do something with self-assuredness. And confidence are the skills that we need that help us to do these things. Think about back when we were kids and we each learned how to ride a bicycle. That's a, a scenario that a lot of us can relate to. We had the confidence to ride the bicycle. Mom and daddy or a friend or uncle and aunt were showing us how to ride the bicycle, but as we were going along, we were a little nervous. So we were missing some of that confidence. But over time, as we practiced riding our bicycle, we got better and better so that our confidence level went up. So the confidence we need in order to give us confidence, and we have to have the confidence in what we're being taught. We're coming up, uh, early this year, at the beginning of the year, I talked a little bit about uh, the beginning of the year, myself and Teresa at the beginning of the year, we talked about a new year, a new you. And I just want to challenge everyone right now, as we're kind of at the beginning of July, this is the middle of the year, just to, to do a little mid-year review on some of your goals. What are some of the goals that we each had at the beginning of this year? Uh, back in January, we talked about some of the common ones, like, uh, you know, losing weight, um, you know, saving money eating healthier, things like that. So just take a, little, a moment to think about your goals and how they're going for this year and if, it, if it's time to do a mid-year review. I did a review of my goals back in March and it was scary as to where I was. Uh, I have a business that I'm working on and I work two part-time jobs and of course we all have other things going on, activities, things with friends, things like that. But I just realized I wasn't meeting my goals for my business. So I had to make a hard change. I had to make a very, very difficult change. I quit one of my part-time jobs. So I have two part-time jobs, now I'm down to one. And I'm still working there, but I'll be done in the next two weeks. And I've worked this job for six years. I've, both worked, I've worked both of my jobs for several years. So this was definitely scary. We talked about the other club, uh, Toastmasters Club, CNM Toastmasters, and I was talking to Jillian, who is their club president now, and I said, yeah, I quit one of my jobs. And she said, well, isn't that scary for you financially? 
I said, yes, but this is the thing I have to do in order to make those next steps and get ahead. So I'm going to have to do it and just have faith in the process. When I think back, moving forward for the Toastmasters year, let's think about how we can apply competency uh, and competence and how they can come together. There's lots of great things to learn in Toastmasters that can build both of those skills. As we go throughout the year, a lot of us are giving speeches and we're filling roles in order to help us become better speaking in front of others, more comfortable speaking in front of others, and even just uh, help, help more of our personality show. So we're no longer shy or hiding behind a lectern, but we can get out among people and talk comfortably. So I challenge you, the guests and our members, to think about uh, what you would like, which, why you joined Toastmasters, why you came. We heard some of the reasons today, and there's plenty of others like to do better at work or just to be more comfortable in front of people. So as you think about those things, I just want to remind you about some of the different options that we have available in Toastmasters. For instance, uh, we have a new program right now called Pathways, which is online, very dynamic program. But outside of that, if you want to stretch yourself even more, there's other opportunities inside our club. In addition to filling roles on a regular basis, we have TLI, which is going on right now. TLI is our Toastmasters Leadership Institute, and it's open to everyone. It's uh, we kind of like the officers to go, but if you're not an officer, I definitely encourage you to go and check it out. And before you leave today, we have information about TLI in the back of the room if you want to check out some of the dates. And Bob is holding up some TLI information. Thanks, Bob. So you can check out that's in a copy of our, the itinerary for the TLI that's coming up on Saturday. So definitely check it out. It's free for everyone. Another thing that you could do to challenge yourself with Toastmasters in addition to going to TLI, we have things where you can challenge yourself right here at our club. We have, um, sometimes we have meetings using a microphone in a larger room. And if you've never spoken in front of a microphone, or if you're like me, and like if there, you were in a group and there was like a microphone being passed around, you shied away from it, well, this is your chance to come and work on those skills and practice. You can come early and practice on the microphone, or if you want to just practice giving a speech on a the microphone, then one of the officers can meet with you and uh, practice before the meeting. So this is definitely will build your skills. Uh, I I was used to be really shy, talking on a microphone, and then I just got practice, and now I'm completely comfortable with it. I've even spoken in front of the main CNN meeting a couple times, and that's like over 100 people, and as long as I'm prepared, I'm, you're always a little nervous, but usually pretty comfortable with it. So those are some different things to do uh, as um, that I just kind of encourage you to do as present this coming year. We have a newsletter that will be coming out soon, a new newsletter for month of July, and in that newsletter I list more things that we're going to do this coming year. We have some of the, uh, the May and June edition of the newsletter Bob is holding it up, and the July it will be coming out soon. In the July I will list a few things that we'll be doing for this coming year, and as the president and the officers here, we definitely would like to hear what is important about uh, what you would like to do this coming year. So definitely, when our newsletter comes out, and we'll email it to everyone, check it out, and definitely go for your goals this year. Better <coughs> Toastmaster. <sighs> well, confidence and competence, they do definitely go hand in hand. Thank you for that message, person. Now we're going to have a slight change. We're going to have speaker number two, which is a technical presentation. This is for the non project number three for the non technical audience. Time is 10 to 12 minutes. And our speaker is Bob Wilson. And the title is to sum this is a widget. Today we see technical advances that leave many of us unaware, feeling confused, bewildered, and cursing our ignorance. Often we know there is a need, yet how to identify this need and determine how to best meet this need. We value those who help explain this. We appreciate those who help, and one example is about to be shared. Bob Wilson.
We look at many things, and sometimes it's new. And what do we do? We sit there and we say, I'll never understand this. How many of you like cake? I mean, all hands are going to go up. I didn't say a lot. I said, how many like it? We have a cake. Maybe it's about this big around. It's about this thick. When you say, I'll never understand this, you want to ram that cake in your face and swallow one bite, and you know that's not going to work. What do we do? We cut it into slices. Sometimes people will ram it in their face and they don't wear it, wear more than they eat. But really, you're supposed to take it into smaller bites with the pieces with the fork if you're being good manners, or you just, but you're taking it in bite sized pieces. And that's what we're going to see today from a plan. We could modify it a little bit to fit this situation a little bit. We're going to grow a business. And the easiest way to do that is think about these two phrases. The more you work, the more you gain. That's true. 100%. Better yet, a smarter work is more effective than hard work. You're going to see some of that. Let's look at the world you know, and out of that, you know, really the world is too monstrous. Your world is smaller. Then again, all you have to worry about is your world and the people you influence, be it here in Toastmasters. The workforce, your personal life, your church, the people you come in contact with as you go about your daily business. Go to the grocery store, you're stuck in line, I'll bet you someone will say, hi, haven't you noticed how they seem to have two speeds here, slow and slower? <laughs> Bob Jiggers, isn't this line any faster be walking backwards? Haven't you noticed that? And they start laughing, and you start a little chit-chat going. Contact, you have different circles. We're going to focus on one. Because those circles can overlap with others. They'll touch others, overlap a little bit, maybe with two or three other common people. You may see the same person at work, at church, maybe living down the street from you. And yes, you might even see that same person in your house because family is a circle too. But let's move on a little bit. We're going to be sharing information with others. How do you do that? Talking, showing people things, spending time with them, demonstrating things, showing you. Sometimes you're getting them a product that shows knowledge. Many of us have told someone else, oh, this book is a great one to get. You should get it, and they do it. Because you recommended it. We're going to go deeper. Because within the area of knowledge, it's your job to share it and to get them excited about learning more. How do you do that? Product of knowledge, the materials. But when you have that going, <coughs> and you told others, they want to do the same thing, so they become independent knowledge distributors. Now, You've got two people, and then the company says, hey, you're a training manager. Really? Yeah, you're building them up. Cool. They do the same thing, and you keep getting more people involved. Now you have three training managers, and each one has two or more knowledge distributors, independent knowledge distributors below them. Build on this. You keep doing your job right. Now you have... Three regional managers and maybe another regional manager or training manager under you because you're feeding and showing them how to do things. You grow some more. They call you divisional vice president. 
You don't have to have five people the same level, but you certainly need to have four of the uh, next one, and one, in, at least one is just a little bit. You need no one lower. You keep building on this, they call you a senior vice president. Look at the people you have responsibility to help learn things. Now, you're going to say, what's in it for me? There are tiers. Let's go back to here for just a second. Top tier, you. First tier. Below this is the second tier. Or you can look at it this way. You get 7% of what you produce. You get 5% of what the people below you produce. There's more, but a little bit less. 2% of the people below that. Half a percent of the remainings. But you're going to say, huh? How does that work? It adds. Because we're not just talking addition, we're talking addition and multiplication. Together it means less or more. More. Precisely. Now, the training manager gets a bonus of $5,000. I can handle $5,000. Can you? Yeah. The regional manager gets a $7,000 bonus. Now, we're not talking five, take, no, 7000 more. The regional vice president gets a BMW, a unique shade of red and gray that the company's worked out. You hit divisional vice president, they give you a Bentley. Give it to you. They make the payments for you for five years. You hit the senior vice president, you not only have these two cars, but they give you a, a bonus, and this varies by how productive you are, and a $50,000 expense account because now you have to pay people to help you keep track of all the people under you. Whoa. But you see, the one drawback is that four letter word a lot of people get scared of. It starts with a W, who knows what it is? Work. Work. Now, you're again, you're saying, what's in it for me? Well, you also have to pay right your expenses. You can count on this. $100 gets started, one-time fee. $4.95 web access monthly. $4.95 to work through. Use the credit card processor online. Gee. Business expenses can be deducted off of your taxes. Now, it looks a little nicer. You can deduct those things. Look, here's something that's a little variable. Office space. If a home is 20 feet by 50 feet, that is 1,000 square feet. Am I correct on the math? Mm -hmm. But if you're using one room of about 15 square feet, you don't deduct your house payments. You deduct 15 from the 1,000 for your business expenses. That's like 1%, 1.5%. Hey, it's more than zero, am I right? So that helps. You buy a fax machine for the business. Very few people buy it for themselves because you can do a lot of the stuff online. Business expense, other things. Folders, three or four for personal use. Doesn't really matter. You gotta buy a couple hundred folders, lots of paper, the printer. Upgrade your computer, take off half of it for business expense. Those of you use some of it for personal. The IRS will look at the expense and the reduced amount that you're writing off. Okay, fine. Man bought a suit for his business, but he worked at church. Instead of Saying, oh, 100% for business, he wrote off half of it for the business because half of it was personal. Transportation costs, you can write off 57 and 58 cents per mile and for the use them for the business. Nice. Now you can see, so he said, save some money to build your business. Let's just use a $4,000 amount, which is pretty low. Instead of Britannica encyclopedias, costs $2,000, and there are people who sell 
two or three of those sets per week. Now it's available online. So we're just going to use a low number of $4,000 a month times the 7% is $280. Well, it's still more than zero. But we're not talking just your production. 5% of everybody else below you added to that $4,000 using low numbers is $680. Add the people below that one, and you can bring it up to $1,600 a month. Now you're starting to talk some real money. Some people make that in a week. Most of us don't. Now you might go a little higher. You keep adding the building the bottom base a little bit more. $3,800 per month. Doesn't that look a little nicer? Those are the formulas there. We can break down or not. You go up another level. I can handle $6,000 a month in income, couldn't you? Same $4,000. Some will produce more. Some will do less. You might have more in different, different balance of the layers. It's fine. Because it's working. The top level, look at the formula for that. $16,000 a month. See, the kicker is all these people down here. That's $5,000 alone. And if you want to add your own, you can, or you can skip it. Because you're too busy trying to help other people do good. The real estate broker will still find time to sell a house. Because that's business. Suppose you just want to sell. Free credit card processing, free web access. All you have to do is generate $40,000 $40, a month in sales. Possible. Look at the bonuses. You get $50,000, they give you an extra $2,000 bonus. Excuse me, $1,000. You hit for each additional $50,000, they give you $2,000 more. There are people who can just sell water to fish. Okay. Scan that one quick. It's not a pyramid scheme if you have a product or service that is genuine and real to sell. If all you're doing is getting money off of people to say, hey, give me $100 to become a member, that's a scheme and it's illegal. This is a product and a service that will change hands and also change lives. Do you want to be part of those who make lots of money? You can. The decision is yours. Adam Toastmaster.
get you to think on your feet. What we want is to be playful. We don't want to think of our answers in advance because a lot of times we wind up spending more time thinking about what we're going to say instead of focusing on what somebody else is saying. So, and this is what makes us different from other Toastmaster groups. They do table topics, we do improv. Today we have a game, and it, this is our first one, it's called Ten Fingers. Everybody holds up ten fingers. And we're going to go around the circle. If the person speaking makes a statement and you can say yes to it, your finger stays up. If you say no to it, your finger goes down. That's how we get to know a little bit about each other. Example, if I say, I have a cat, and you have a cat, you keep your fingers up. Well, I don't have a cat. My finger goes down. All right? And you got to figure out how you're going to put your fingers down. The person with the last finger up is, quote unquote, the winner. All right? Does everybody understand? Yes. Okay. So, let's see. I'll start this off with... I ride motorcycles. <laughs> uh, we'll go this way. Oh, oh which is okay. This is one of us. That we're gonna go around. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, how about to my brother? Go fuck one. So you gotta put a finger down, Mom. Unless you have a twin. Oh, that's right. You ride motorcycles. Yeah, not lightly. Well, then you probably gonna put a finger down for my statement. Oh, See, I said I ride motorcycles. Not every day. <laughs> no, not every day. If if you ride a motorcycle, your Forget finger stays up. <laughs> if you if you don't ride a motorcycle, your finger goes down. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. All right. I drive a minivan. <laughs> you do. <laughs> don't anymore. I watched the World Cup. I watched the World Cup. Uh, I read glasses. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a passport. Yeah, I'm 
I've lived in other states besides Virginia. I like national parks. I've never had braces. I tried tennis. I went to Wimbledon. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been to Europe. I made parasail. Parasailing. He has, he has <laughs> done parasailing. Who's that? Uh, Ricky, yeah. Justin, yeah. and Bob. Okay. I saw a bear when I was out hiking. Is 
spike injury. And crying. <laughs> Hobbled. Slowly. What's hobble? Hobble. Oh, okay. Towards. Verse 40. Jamal wants to switch places. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can go off the wall if you want to. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Whatever. Jesus. <laughs> Everyone. That's right. Mind when I travel this toast massive. So 
those masters have been held of you by public speaking. Public speaking also gives the idea of when to stop. That, when you're ready. <laughs> ready right now. <laughs> Did you everybody have fun? Yeah. yeah. And now we're going to move back to our seats. <laughs> and now we are moving on to our evaluation portion of our meeting. Our general evaluator, Bob Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chancellor. Now I get to wear another hat. As wearing the hat of the most experienced Toastmaster, I get to also help evaluate the meeting where we look at how we can be better and encourage all of us in the areas of weakness, and the best mistakes are the ones you learn from. And if others learn from them, even better. To that end, we bring up the evaluator for the speeches. We call it Super Evaluator, or do we have two evaluators tonight? We have two evaluators tonight. The evaluator for speech number one is going to be Juan. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 
items to touch upon in your advanced advanced manual here. I'm not going to touch up on all of them. I'm trying to cram a bunch together. I put excellent for eight of them. Well, let me take that back. Seven and a half of them. The ones I did excellent on were absence of complexity. It was easy to understand. The whole thing and the transitions from one item to the next, I thought were great. Because when you started out, you started out with a very simplistic, this is you, this is the people you know, people you're trying to reach, people you, your family, and the people you run into at the store, who works, work, or wherever it may be. And you expanded, expanded upon it. And the transitions went smoothly, talking about how to fix be leveled from the from, le from just yourself to the levels of management to the incomes and how the whole train everything worked. Delivery, talked about that, visual aids, the slides were very easy to understand. Very you know, they were very easy to see, very bright, and so that it kind of attracted me to it. I think I paid more attention to the slides than I paid attention to actually your body movements in the, in the grand scheme of things. And or, I mentioned the organization already. It seemed to be really well. Support materials, the slides. I like the handouts. And then there was a one of the other other speech. One of your recent speeches. Someone made some a comment about not having enough handouts to go around. I, I noticed this speech compared to the last one that they have. All, all the handouts across around the room. I thought I'd really like that. For areas to may need improvement upon or or missing, may, may have been kind of missing. Um, for the topic section, I thought I just put excellent, I moved that down to satisfactory because it's, it would be a good maybe a business 101 type of, 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 a, of an audience, maybe versus a Toastmasters one, but it was a good good, um, a good audience, a good place to practice, something like that, uh, or, or so I thought. The other one, I noticed that at the opening, I put excellent, kind of sliding to should approve, because I thought it could be taken almost either way, the opening, attention catering. I haven't had dinner yet. So I'm getting kind of hungry. When you start talking about cake, I'm sitting there working. You know, that's a great thing. So, but that uh, should improve because you talked about the cake and then transition into the main body of the speech. And I'm thinking, what happened to the cake? Did, did we finish it? I mean, or did, the, did we build the cake throughout the speech? Did we have icing and candles and everything else to go along with it? Uh, last item, I couldn't really, couldn't really address. It says responses to audience questions answered and sim simply and directly. Nobody asked you anything, so we really couldn't address that one. But based upon if, it, if this speech were anything like prior speeches, I'm sure you would have done well on it. This has been no value. Thank you.
And who might receive the title of Wizard of Oz tonight? <laughs> So, for the speech one, uh, Crystal. I counted two ums, three ahs, one you know. And I heard the filler and like. But I did not hear any ha's. I did hear uh, the word they, which was great. And Bob, I heard two you knows. G as it used as a filler word, and I heard the word of the Now we get to see how we did. We may never start on time with this traffic out there, but we're supposed to try. So can we try, please? Everybody was not present at the beginning because we were late and still traffic started me up today and when we had work I still put out a note saying T R F C traffic is now a four letter word. <laughs> All our guests were greeted properly. And I think everybody's enjoying themselves. You all having a good time tonight? Yes. Yes. But Toastmaster was prepared and we were made to feel comfortable. Evaluators left us with a good feeling and some encouragement. Improv, oh yes, improv it well. I think we're well prepared. Madam Toastmaster, not every speech is five to seven minutes. And you instructions for the timing, describing the timing indicated everybody was five to seven minutes. More correctly, we want to say, um, remember this. There is a target time for the speech. At some point in the Shorter ones we want for our covering tonight. Two minutes before is the green card. One minute before is the yellow. When you have hit the line, it's the red. Be it seven minutes, be it five minutes, be it 12 minutes. And then I'm not going to do any 40 minute speeches. I've had a book and I set it aside another time. I'm also looking at correctly pronounced words. Sometimes, having judged, that can be the difference between first and second place. And I had to do that recently. One word I heard that really stuck out, and you're not the only one to say this, the word that stresses that something is of great value, it starts with an I, what is that word? Im most people seem to say it right. Occasion we're going to hear important. Dropped two sounds from it. The T's important. Take that split second to get the extra words out. Many people have a problem saying, "I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it." If you hear it in context, native speakers, we know what it is. But not everybody is going to catch it. I have a slight hearing problem. It's starting to get a little worse. I have to listen a little harder. Take that split second to get the word out. I use fewer contractions, so I make sure I'm clearly communicating. Thus, I will say, do not a lot. Can I recommend that or make, I mean, ask you to think about it some? Having said that, as a stickler for the, for the English language, we're doing good. We're doing better in many ways. I'm hearing this thing called what it's supposed to be. It is not a podium. The podium is what you stand on. I haven't heard that in a long time. Madam President, Toastmaster, anyone use the gavel, I recommend. It doesn't sound as good as. With that, we bring her back to our Toastmaster of the day.
wonderful time and learn new things. As we close out, I just want to tell you about some upcoming things that we have, and then I'll be asking for guest reactions to our meeting. The first thing I mentioned in my speech is TLI, which is Toastmasters Leadership Institute. And if you would like more information about that, you can check out the uh, sign stands that are in the back of the room. They have dates, and then on the table in the back, Bob has a flyer with more information about what you'll be learning at the TLI. If you want to check that out, feel free. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Next, we have coming up, we just had another open house. We just had an open house last month, some of you may know. But yes, we're having another one next month. Why? Because we have a champion that's going to be coming to speak with us. He's our fellow Toastmaster, David Hollingsworth. David recently competed in our district contest in May, and he won. He told a story, a uh, five to seven minute, he gave a speech, five to minute, seven minute speech, and he competed against, I think it was maybe six others in front of a room of almost 200 people, and he won his, that day. So now he's going to go on to the Toastmaster International Contest, which takes place in Chicago in August. And in that room, anyone want to take a guess as to how many people will be in that room that day? 5,000. Not 5,000, a little bit lower, but a pretty good, good size crowd, yeah. Any other guesses? Don't be shy. Uh, right in the middle. I think you said, one y'all said one and one said three, 2,000. So almost 2,000 people. So he's competing against 50 contestants, uh, not just from our state, not just from our country, but from around the world. So it'll be a very exciting time. Toastmasters has this uh, contest every year in a different location, uh, sometimes here in the United States, sometimes in different countries. I think last year it was in Canada. So he'll be coming here on at our next meeting, which I think is July, let me see, I'm trying to get the dates here, 24th, someone correct me if I'm wrong. 26, yes, thank you. Oh, 20, yeah, maybe 24th, yeah, two, two, thank you, two weeks from today. <laughs> two weeks from today, and he's going to be giving that contest winning speech. I've listened to it a couple times. It's very entertaining, so definitely come back and check us out. If you're a member, we want to learn more about great techniques, um, come check us out. And he'll be asking for audience feedback from each one of us that we'll write down. So it'll give you a chance to tell them what you like, what you want to see more of, what you didn't care for so much. So that next meeting, we should be meeting in community room C, which is right down the hallway near the restrooms. And we will, for members, we'll be uh, filling roles that day. So if you want to grab a role, I think we're still kind of tweaking the online sign up, but it'll give you a chance to practice on a microphone if you would like to do that. So that's coming up. And actually, I'm sorry, the open house is coming up August 4th. And David may be coming here for that too, but in two weeks he'll be definitely coming to speak to give his award-winning speech to get ready. August 14th. August 14th? Or, okay, August 14th. Yes, that's what I'm, yes, that's what I'm getting the date so August 14th, open house. Did I miss anything else? Okay, yeah, August 14th. And then in two weeks he's coming. He's definitely coming in two weeks, and then he may be coming at the beginning of August to give another speech to practice with us. So as we depart, I just want to ask any of our guests if you would like to just stand up and tell us what you thought, what you thought about our meeting today, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you learned, what you are going to take away as you go out into the world. Maybe you learn some new techniques and speaking for myself or Bob. Would you like to stand up, Louise? Yeah. Please. So this was my first meeting with those masters, the first school I visit, and I liked it a lot, especially the two speeches I I could get some techniques that they have, that there is a formula to make the speech, I noticed, like reading stories. And then I also like the activity of making the, the circle, because I didn't, I didn't want words uh, and many others, and I could practice my English, so I, I really like this, this activity at this time. Great, thank you so much, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the great thing about Formula, everyone who would like to get the chance to speak at every meeting. So it helps you practice even a little bit in front of a group to get more and more comfortable. And when we give our speeches, we do. when you become a member, we do have a format to follow. And it's basically an outline on how you write your speech. They don't tell you exactly word for word, right to write, but kind of what you need to put in your speech. So thank you. Anyone else care to give some comments? Please, go ahead, Jamal. I appreciated uh, both the speaks, both the speeches uh, that were given. Uh, I felt like it was very transparent and open. And you did smile a lot, like uh, Juan said, uh, and it pulled me in. And then Bob made me want to find my own business and make a lot of money. <laughs> so, I mean, really, it was very compelling. I really appreciated that. Um, I like the 
fact that everybody is very respectful, very friendly, um, very uplifting, and the criticism is constructive to help you, to build you, um, not to harm you, but to arm you going forward. So really appreciated that, and even the exercise, that was trying. I mean, I, I enjoyed it, but it's like, okay, wh where do I pick up from here? So I got thrown some curveballs, but it was good to learn to think on my feet. It's kind of like sports, like staying on the balls of your feet, so really appreciated that. Um, only criticism, it's really cold in here. It is cold. It's freezing in here. So, we need some coffee, right? Yes, some hot chocolate or something like that. So yeah. that's well, it. Thank you, thank you so much. Anyone else? Any of our other guests here to tell us what you liked, or about our meeting today, what you learned, what your takeaway was? It's okay, there's another chance for you to practice speaking. Yeah. My name is Mira Asma. My name is Miran Asfa. Uh, this is my second time here. I, I've always enjoyed this since uh, my day one. I like the interactive. I like the positivity, the energy, and the feedback. I wasn't here for the speeches, my apologies, but I was here for the interactive, and I enjoyed it a lot. Great. Well, glad to have you. Anyone else? I'm actually the, in the same program um, Miran is in. Uh, this, is our, this is our second time visiting. And I really like the impromptu speech you guys do here. Because uh, I'm originally from Ethiopia. I would, like moved here, like I mentioned, like four years ago. So like thinking of what to say next is like a thing for me. So I feel like that helps out. That's, that's okay. Great. Oh, can you tell us a little bit more about workforce development and what that is? I'm not sure if we got that last time. Oh, uh, so uh, I'm in a program called Year Up. It's, uh, it's like a joint program with uh, NOVA, North Division Community College. Okay. So it basically like, helps us uh, be more professional, as well as like learning more technical skills like IT and uh, cyber security and stuff like that. It's a year-long program. So yeah, we're on the first phase of the program, and uh, we're encouraged to come to Toastmasters to better to better our like speaking, yeah, public speaking skills. Okay, great. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Oh yes, please. How, how, question. Did, how did you learn about us? Uh, through the website our program manager provided. Uh, this is like one of the closest Toastmasters. To through the Toastmasters website? Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Well, come back and see us again and feel free to bring some friends. You can bring your friends back if you'd like to. <laughs> Have some candy again before you leave. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Well, I think that concludes our meeting. Or Teresa? Oh, actually, we actually I'm sorry. We do have one more thing to do. This is our uh, immediate past president, Teresa McCoy. She was our president for this past year, and she has some business that she's going to finish up from the previous term. So, Teresa, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you and let you close it out. Okay. First, vice president of education is my new title, and as vice president of education, I'm to help you formulate your goals deadlines and strive to meet them so I'll help you with the pathways program getting online uh, if you need help writing your speeches etc that's what I'm here for also I help with organizing the meetings and as you saw there are roles that need to be filled so I like to have my roles filled out a couple weeks in advance so we're not scrambling at the last minute. It does require you to be a member in order to help. These help with leadership development. And when you fill out and serve in any of the roles, the grammarian, the ah counter, the timer, you know, we, can, we start out small and build up as your confidence in your skill level builds up. That is necessary when you get to level three in Pathways. So between now, level one, to level three, you serve, fulfill a role. We enter it in on your profile in Pathways, and by the time you get to level three, you don't have to worry because you've already completed serving in the um, meeting. And you're already meeting that. Next. This is how we learn. For those who are new members, Huber Mill is only two years old. The first set of officers had no background, but they had this leadership handbook. This tells you what every role is supposed to do, what your responsibilities are. 
our second year, we kind of started all over again <laughs> with more new leaders who had no background in Toastmasters. And this was our guide because we didn't have the previous leaders to mentor us. And um, I now have the latest edition to hand out to our leaders for this year. Even though we are not new leaders, we have all changed positions. And so, on. Oh, thank you. Bob. Crystal. Bob is our vice president of membership. Juan is our secretary. Lee is our treasurer when it comes time for membership. And our sergeant at arms, Bob Wilbur. Now, there are committees that go with all of these officer roles. So for those who are not yet members, once you become a member, you can help join any of the committees. We have newsletters, websites, uh, contacting media outlets, organizing speech -a -thons. There are so many other tasks that need to be done. It's not that the officer in charge does everything, it's that the officer works with a committee. Have you heard the statement, I would rather have 1% of 100 people's effort than 100% of my own? And that's our philosophy. You know, we want to create leaders and that requires distributing. We don't want to just do everything ourselves. We want to help you develop too. And this was a tremendous opportunity for me uh, because I did not feel comfortable standing in front of a room. This has helped my private business tremendously, serving as an officer and working on the different committees. So I would definitely encourage you, since that's where you want to develop. All right. I am finished with what I need to do. You've done all the announcements? Yeah. At this point, I will officially adjourn the meeting.